A world is called superhabitable if it has the ability to support life in ways that are better than what Earth can do. Earth is the only planet known to have people living on it. Because life on Earth depends on liquid water, efforts to find other planets in the world that might be able to support life have focused on planets that are similar to Earth. But some experts think that there are other types of worlds that could have conditions for life that are just as good or even better than those on Earth. In fact, some scientists think that focusing mostly on worlds like Earth may be too anthropocentric and geocentric, keeping us from seeing how important exobiology can be. At least 26 planets outside of our solar system could have a better chance of having life than Earth. Research released on September 18th in the Journal of Astrobiology says that these planets are just a little older than Earth, just a little wetter, just a little warmer, and just a little bigger than Earth. Because of all of these things, it's possible that some of these planets are the best places to look for life outside of our solar system. We have to focus on only a few planets that have the best chance of having life that can evolve into more complex forms. Dirk Scholz Makich, an astrobiologist at the University of Washington, said in a statement, but we must be careful not to get stuck looking for a second Earth because there might be planets that are better for life than ours. Seeking Superhabitable Planets Astronomers have found more than 4,000 planets outside of our solar system. These planets are called extrasolar planets or exoplanets. The vast majority of these are not good for keeping life going. As an example, the temperature on planet Kelt 9 b is so high that its atmosphere is always breaking apart. Tress 2b is the planet with the deepest surface we know of. Its atmosphere is 1,800 degrees Fahrenheit or 980 degrees Celsius. GJ433d is on the other end of the range of uninhabitable planets. It's the Neptune-like planet with the coldest temperatures ever found, according to the people who found it. But there are also a lot of planets that are in the zone where life can exist around their stars. This is the just right distance for a planet's surface to be neither too hot nor too cold for life as we know it to develop. Schulz Makach and his team of researchers wanted to find extrasolar planets that are likely to be superhabitable. This means planets that are not only in the livable zone, but also have other features that could make them a good place for life to grow. One of these things was a star with the right size and length of life. This is especially important when you consider that it took 3.5 billion years for complex life to form on Earth. The researchers pointed out that a bigger world would also have more gravity, which would make the atmosphere thicker. This could be good for organisms that could fly. A bigger world would also have more land and places to live. A planet that is only slightly warmer than Earth would be easier to live on, because it wouldn't have polar areas that are hard for life to live in. However, this slightly warmer planet would also need to be wetter than Earth to keep deserts from taking over most of its landmasses. During the early Carboniferous period, about 359 million years ago, Earth might have been like a better place to live on another world. During this time, most of the world's land was like a tropical rainforest in terms of its temperature. Modern-day global warming is not healthy for life on Earth for a number of reasons, including the fact that the shift is occurring too quickly for many creatures to adapt to it, and because of the consequences that rising sea levels will have on the human infrastructure. Yet, temperatures that are somewhat higher are not intrinsically harmful to life. According to what the experts wrote, a better version of Earth might also have a moon that is a little bit bigger or that is a little bit closer to the planet. This would help keep Earth's orbit steady and cut down on wobbles that are bad for life on the planet. The experts came up with a set of guidelines that can be used to meet all of these needs. The perfect superhabitable world would have all of the following. It would be in orbit around a K dwarf star, which is a small star that is slightly cooler than our Sun, which is called a yellow dwarf. It would be about 5 to 8 billion years old, about 10% bigger than Earth, about 9 degrees Fahrenheit or 5 degrees Celsius, warmer on average than Earth, have a moist atmosphere with 25 to 30 percent oxygen, and have land and water in different places. It would also have a moon that was between 1 and 10 percent of the size of the planet. 
All of these things can't be used at the same time to judge how far away an alien is. For example, there is no way to figure out how big an exoplanet's surface is or how it is spread out over the world. But the researchers focused on objects that seem to meet that criteria and have been found by the Kepler telescope. They found 24 Kepler objects of interest, which are objects that may or may not be planets. This was done by paying attention to things that could be measured, like the type of the star and the size of the planet. So far, only two of the 24 possibilities have been proven to be exoplanets – Kepler 1126b and Kepler 69c. Out of the 24 objects, nine were found to be in the right path around the right type of star, 16 were found to be in the right age range, and five were found to be in the right temperature range. Only one candidate, KOI 5715.01, was in the right range for all three categories. However, the researchers wrote that the real surface temperature of the planet depends on how strong the greenhouse effect is in its atmosphere. Even with the most powerful telescopes, none of the 24 possible planets in our galaxy can be seen right now, because they are all more than 100 light years away. For example, Kepler 69c is more than 2,000 light years away, so it's unlikely that scientists will be able to look at it more closely for signs of life anytime soon. Scholz McCutch and his colleagues said that it is very important to figure out what makes a planet super habitable, since it is likely that one of these worlds will be found within 100 light years of our solar system. They said that if this is true, people from Earth should go look to that world first to see if there is life somewhere else in the universe. Scholz McCutch thought that out of these 24, KOI 5554.01 was the most likely to be superhabitable. This planet is about 6.5 billion years old, and its width is between 0.72 and 1.29 times that of Earth. It is about 700 light years from Earth and goes around a yellow dwarf. Scholz McCutch said, I really liked the average surface temperature, which was about 27 degrees Celsius or 80 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's probably about the size of Earth and a little bit older than Earth, the speaker said. Each one of these probably superhabitable planets is more than 100 light years away from Earth. Because of this, NASA's Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite, or TESS, can't take high quality pictures of them to learn more about them. But Scholz McCutch said that future spacecraft like the newly launched James Webb Space Telescope, NASA's Louvor Space Observatory mission proposal, and the Plato Space Telescope could help us learn more about these worlds. All of these ships are run by their own space agencies. Scholz McCutch says just because we look for superhabitable planets doesn't mean that they have life on them. We want to warn you that, as we look for superhabitable planets, it's possible for a planet to be able to support life or even be superhabitable, but still be lifeless. Thank you so much for watching this video. Stay tuned for more.